Start broadcast. Start recording. Start another call test here. All right, this is Len test one, two, one, two. Go ahead, Adam. Testing, testing. All right. Standing by. Beautiful. We have a working setup. Hallelujah. <laughs> Okay, that's recording. That's displaying. Everything looks good to me. <clears throat> All right, are you ready to get started, my friend? Yeah, Mike. All right, here we go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another installment in our Notice to Airmen interview series, a series where I sit down with different aviation business owners to, uh, to learn about their products and services. Today, I've got a gentleman all the way from Australia who's uh, going to share a new website that he's working on. It's uh, mypilot.net, and uh, I'm pr proud to introduce you uh, guys today to Adam Howley. Welcome aboard, Adam. Thanks for having me, Mike. So, uh, you know, we started actually working a few weeks ago through email, um, trying to work together on different website ideas. And um, I've been checking out your website. And, you know, the, the basic idea that I've gotten from it so far is you're, you're uh, working on some, some training articles, some flight manuals, and some other ideas. But why don't you give us uh, first a basic description or an idea of what the website's about? Yeah. Um, well, last year we, we moved actually from New Zealand to Australia. And the process of actually converting a license, um, that, that was a fun journey. And we started writing down how to do it for friends because they were also coming over. And then I thought, why don't I just put it on a website, you know, just any website. And then it started taking shape from there. And then I started writing about the differences between Australia and New Zealand. And it's just basically from that um, converting of my license, that's where my pilot started. And... The reason I called it my pilot is because it's exactly that. I'm the kind of pilot that I want to be. A lot of pilots out there, especially the guys who do the cadet ships and that sort of thing, tend to jump in the sausage factories. And my pilot's all about showing others, and especially showing the uh, the newer guys, what you can actually do. And I come from doing aerobatics formation. I just got my float endorsement this year. Um, I've done instructor rating, and I'm just about to start a new job flying Baron's IFR. And all these sorts of things I want to show uh, people. And if I could go back and I was a 10-year-old boy wanting to fly and I had something like my pilot where I could read about all these different things, um, it would just be absolutely gold. It would be a great help. And that's all I want to do. There's no money. There's no nothing. I, I bear all the costs of the website. Mm -hmm. I take time out of my, my own personal life to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just to share. And... Um, the, the problem that I had once I started it was collaboration. I didn't have enough articles and enough uh, to write about, so I thought. And I asked a couple of people, and yeah, recently I asked yourself, and the amount that I'm getting at the moment is just great, and it's starting to build, and it's starting to uh, to get momentum. Um, and the one, one thing I also wanted to do was the flight manuals because mm -hmm. how many check flights or – things, new jobs, you know, you can't find that flight manual. You want to find out about that aircraft and you just can't. Right. Um, so I started writing writing about aircraft and then I thought, well, I need, I need to have these flight manuals so people can understand what I'm writing about. Okay. So you're originally, then you, see, you say you're originally from New Zealand. Yeah, I'm originally from shaky Christchurch. Uh, Christchurch, real earthquakes have been happening. Okay, so what brought you over to Australia then? Uh, believe it or not, the market back home is terrible. Mm. Um, oh, I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's I everywhere, know a isn't about it? That. <laughs> um, yeah, it's absolutely everywhere. So I, I thought, why not? Why not move over to Australia and, and get more experience as well? Because um, a lot of the guys back home, not being being rude to anyone, 
particularly, but just in general, they're all one trick ponies. They've they've done the instructor rating and then mm. they go to the airlines and mm. then that's it, you know. And right. um, and it's sad. A, a lot a lot of them are actually bored now. Um, the flying dash eights or whatnot, and they uh, I talked to them, you know, the other day about my float endorsement, and they're asking me twenty million questions about it, and I'm saying, yeah, <laughs> why don't you do it yourself? Yeah, and it's not hard. You just need a bit of money, but they chose to do that instead. Right. Um, but to, to me, there's a company here um, in in a place called Airwit. Uh, sorry, that Airwit Sundays is the company in a place called Wit Sunday, and uh, they have beavers and caravans on floats. I'd rather do that, you know, get my hands dirty and and, and fly those things around. But mm-hmm. um, it's just the market; it, it, it is, and the variety. I mean, we don't have caravans on floats back home. Um, we hardly have caravans, you know. <laughs> so, so it's just a bit of variety. But you know, we we will end up. I don't know, but um, but that's the best thing about my pilot as well. It comes from both a New Zealand and an Australian background. Uh, we're pretty much the same anyway. Okay, great. So you, you're, the two countries sort of operate under a similar a similar aviation uh, infrastructure anyway, from what I understand. They do. Um, the Converting the license, uh, is there's no exams, no nothing. Uh, you just walk in, get your license converted, and away you go. Mm-hmm. And if you read on my pilot, that's actually a bad thing because as a I came over as a flying instructor. I walked into a flying school. Um, my friend was the chief pilot at the time and, and chief flying instructor. And he started sitting me down and showing me all these differences. And it took me a very long time to to get the hand uh, get the hang of it. And I was worried that I was actually going to disadvantage some of these students because I was sort of teaching them things that would do in New Zealand, but they do it differently here. So right. yeah, there is actually there is actually a difference in terms of law. But hey, the planes still go up and down, and right. they yaw and roll. <laughs> you know, there's right. no difference there. Okay, so tell uh, tell me a little bit more. I mean, how did you get interested back in the day with aviation? What was your your start? And and as you mentioned uh, already, you've you've got you know your flight instructor rating, and you know tell us how you got involved in aviation and what you've worked your way through for ratings. Uh, well, it all started. Uh, we were going trip to Los Angeles. We went to Disneyland, and I asked if I could go to the cockpit. And I was probably seven or eight at the time. Mm-hmm. And I walked, I walked up. I had my slippers on, I remember. And I went up to the cockpit and I asked the captain all the all the mundane questions he's heard before. I'm sure. <laughs> um, how fast are we going? How high are we? When are we going to get there? And I remember just looking around, and there were buttons everywhere. Yes. And I thought this was just awesome, you know. And but it did it, it, it never started um, at a particular point. It just actually grew from probably that um, that time frame because I started asking Dad, "What are the wings for? They're not doing anything." And mm-hmm. then uh, next minute, I had flight simulator on my computer, and and I just kept asking questions. And I got to a point where Dad couldn't answer them, so I, I had textbooks and I started reading about those and. Um, it, it just grew from there, and, and when I was fourteen, there was a course uh, down in Tauranga that you could do for um, a week, and you did ten hours in that one week for two thousand dollars, I think it was. Mm-hmm. And my first flight course effects control, straight and level, climbing, descending, medium turns, etc. And then we went on across country. I think my fifth flight, because that course was just to give you a taste of the flight. Right. Um, so my fifth flight was doing cross countries and I think my 10th flight of my logbooks aerobatics. So it was a good taste and since that course I, I came back to school and I knew what I wanted and uh, it was hard because you're sitting in biology going, what's this got to do with anything? Um, you're sitting <laughs> in chemistry, you know, going, why do I need to know this? Uh, but then you get to physics and that was really fun. Right. Um, so there, it started from there and I actually left school early um, to do flying. Um, in New Zealand, you have the option of doing seventh form. I left. I said I don't want to do seventh form to get into university because mm-hmm. once you're 21 and over, you can just walk into any university and start studying anyway. Mm-hmm. So I thought if it all goes wrong, I'll just go back to university. But no, I got myself a part-time job and I started flying. And after a year, I got my PPL and then I got my commercial. And um, I got my commercial on the Friday. I set the flight test and I passed. And on the Monday, I was on the instructor rating course. Nice. Um, they, yeah, they needed people, so uh, they got me on, which was great. 
And while I was instructing students um, during the week, I'd be at the same flying school doing my um, IFR rating and twin ratings mm-hmm. during the weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and then things just started growing. You start meeting people and networking. And we're at a uh, expo at Ardmore, and I come across this pilot. He had a big moustache. That's all I remember. And his name was Bill. And I started talking to him, and he was a <laughs> – FO uh, on the 7th 3 at Air New Zealand mm-hmm. and he had this pipe cub behind him and I said what what do you do and he, he said oh I'm, you know, I'm an airline pilot but in my spare time I give ratings on the Piper Cub so mm-hmm. I said alright let's do it so I had my Piper Cub rating and then once I got that and I got a few hours uh, next minute I know one of his students just bought a Piper Cub and he wanted to do some flying in it but Bill said he couldn't he couldn't he didn't have the time to you know, fly both planes. So he actually got me. So I was doing uh, part-time instructing in Piper Cubs at the age of 21. I thought that was pretty cool. Wow. Um, and I did that for a year. And sadly, that's the only thing I regret. Coming over to Australia, I had to leave that behind. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it, it, he's ended up selling the plane. And, and that's a shame, actually. But um, at least I had, had fun in it and uh, enjoyed my time. And now we're over in Australia, I did some instructing here and, and there was just one day where I thought, where am I going to be in a year's time? And unfortunately, the answer was in the circuit in the Cessna 172. Mm-hmm. So I decided to leave. Um, I didn't want to advance in instructing anymore uh, for now. I'll come back to it for sure. Right. And uh, now now's time to get into charter. So I, while I was waiting for a job to come through, I decided to get a float endorsement and um that was the best fun I've ever had. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, now now it seems to be the Barons. So so I'll go do that for a little bit. Well, it's interesting. I'm sort of taking the same path in the way of, you know, getting all of the ratings, working myself up to uh, to a flight instructor rating, doing that. I did that for about, I think, 15 or 16 months and then reached sort of the same point where I wanted to kind of do something more, something different, something more advanced. And that's when I went over to my... Uh, made the transition to the airlines and it sounds like you're sort of in a similar phase because you're you're getting now this is going to be your first uh like first charter job that you're talking about with the barons yeah yeah it will be actually very cool so so how long have you been instructing then uh three years all up um i had the i actually had all the plans to do what's called the acat category instructor rating back home in new zealand Mm -hmm. um and the ADAC ACAT is the top of the top. You can be a, excuse me, you can be a an examiner. You, it's really interesting actually. One wow. uh, privilege of the ACAT is if you have an aircraft here that no one's type rated on, right? Because um, they have individual ratings, like the new Cessna 162 just arrived. No one's type rated on the Cessna 162, so the ACAT just jumps in it, goes up, gives themselves a type rating, and comes down, and then then they start giving instructors ratings and so on and so forth but here you come to australia they've got single engine type ratings you know where i can just jump in a system 206 mm-hmm. and a system 210 and there's there's no instructor required that's that's mental so it's quite different back home um but I, I had everything planned lined up i had a mentor and then everything started falling apart mm-hmm. the uh, the mentor decided to sell his flying school the plane that i had lined up was uh in maintenance and I just thought, well, now's not the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's move on. But I tell you what, having an instructor rating is good because you can come back to it any time. And I think for yourself as well, coming from an airline point of view and then going back to the students, that's just going to help them, isn't it? Well, it, there's a, it's actually kind of going through a transition myself now because I, I've, I'm sort of looking. There's another website that I've been working on with a gentleman in Australia um, a flight training website, and so I started kind of reevaluating what we're doing in the airline world and trying to find ways to relate it to general aviation. There's a lot of material in there, things that I sort of take for granted as an airline pilot, as as you know, just general knowledge. And I'm finding little, you know, like nuggets and tidbits now that are just worth gold. If I had sort of <laughs> known these tricks or this information or understood it this you know certain way when I was uh, a less experienced pilot or or just you know a hobby flyer, so I'm actually finding new material that I've wanted to. I've got to kind of been compiling a list of things that I want to start talking about and sharing. So you sort of 
um, I mean, not everybody kind of goes back to instructing, but it's something that I've been, I've done a little bit on the side. Uh, as an airline pilot, I had a student uh, prior to me going to the airlines that I just, you know, once a week, I still fly with him um, up until about a year or two ago when I moved. So it's uh, it, for people like you and me, it's something you sort of just keep doing. Yeah, and I guess that's what my pilot is. Um, is sort of <laughs> my outcry to still instruct because I love right. it, and um, and seeing seeing people's faces, you know, when they've just done their first solo, um, I, I you just can't beat it. I always come home and tell my partner she flies as well, and mm. um, I always come home and tell her something, you know, something exciting that a student's done. Or there was one student I had, he um, he was just having a bad day, and. The flying school that I was working at, unfortunately, it was an academy type thing, and I didn't like that because each flight was flight lesson was numbered. So on the thirteenth flight, you're going solo, you know, mm. and it's very Air Force type. And I, I don't think that was the right approach. But anyway, you know, we do what we do, and you can't argue with these things. So it was his thirteenth flight, um, an awful number to put on a first solo <laughs> title, but that's all right. And we went up, and he, he just wasn't doing it. He he, he couldn't land. Um, consistently he was drifting after takeoff into the other traffic pattern and um, I said to him look we're not going solo today you know that I know that let's just calm down and just do some circuits mate you're wasting money it's $250 an hour Mm -hmm. you know that's a lot of money let's just calm down and sort yourself out and then we'll go up tomorrow morning Mm -hmm. and instantly his flying got better all the pressure was off and um, I called full stop to the tower and as soon as uh, he got off the taxiway, I said, stop here. And he, said, and he said, look, I'm sorry, that was a bad flight, yada, yada. I said, no, 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 I'm getting out. You're going around. And <laughs> when he come back, he had the biggest smile on his face. And he said, I didn't know I could do it. Mm-hmm. I said, we well, can't have your off days as a pilot. You've got to be cool, calm, and collective, you know. Right, right. Um, and, and I proved it to him. You know, you, you can't just admit defeat. And he said he'd never thought he'd go solo that day, especially after those circuits. And mm. just the smile on his face, he, he bought me a couple of beers afterwards. It was just so much fun. Um, and, yeah, he makes it out as if I was being all grumpy with him and then suddenly sent him solo. And <laughs> I don't know. He, he enjoyed it. That, that's the main thing. Mm-hmm. Well, great. So how um, – am- I'm sort of obviously you and I just been started communicating, so I'm not really familiar with the website as you know, except for the last couple of weeks. But how long ago, uh, you you said you sort of it, it derived out of helping friends essentially make the transition as well. But this mypilot.net itself, how long have you been working on that website? How long has it been live? Um, I started at the beginning of the year, okay. uh, around about March, um, and then I believe. It came out June or July, somewhere around there. I actually put it live. Can't remember actually, and um, it had quite a lot of content on it before before it started. And that was important to me. You don't want to just go to a website and it's only got two articles on it. Mm-hmm. So I, I was building it for a long time, and I was asking a lot of friends to help me out and that sort of thing. Great. And what uh, what are your? I mean, what is your future plans? You said you're not really. This is more of a you know you want to share information, but as far as growth and, and material that you maybe don't have on there currently what are you looking at in the future for expansion yeah it's a good question i was actually sitting down the other night uh, thinking about it all um i've got a friend who has a online store um it's funny because him and i've been collaborating quite a lot about how to do this whole website thing and um, it's called kiwipilot.co.nz and what I want to do is integrate his online store right into my pilot. So my pilot will be the sandbox. You don't necessarily need to leave it to, to buy the items from his store. So that will be one major thing and we'd like to do that um, before Christmas but I doubt that's going to happen you mm-hmm. know, with timing. Um, but in terms of articles, I really want to get those flight manuals um, going. There's the, I've just found a, a DC3 manual that I'll put up there. Um, I put the Satabri one on uh, on the air last night. And the other aspect I'd love to grow is Day in the Life of. And I've got Day in the Life of an instructor, uh, a float plane uh, pilot, because I had a chat to the uh, to the line pilots when I was doing my float endorsement and kind of interviewed them secretly and then wrote it all up. Mm-hmm. And, um, and my partner, she's a parachute um, drop pilot, so she wrote a Day in the Life of a of that. 
but I'd love to have an airline pilot and I'd love to have a charter pilot and mm. and just grow it. So anyone, especially the youngins, who who are interested in that line of work, you know, imagine someone who wants to be a agricultural uh, type pilot. They can click on my pilot. There it is. That's what your day is like. You'll be starting at five in the morning, getting mm. home, and going to bed at eight o'clock. That's what you're in for. And that, that's what I'd love, so people can get these ideas for different careers. And I have nothing against the airline pilots. They're great. But the problem is um, a lot of pilots, they, they could do so much more. And I'm trying to encourage even my students that I had, go out and do some more things. You know, Go do some gliding. That will right. Go do some different things rather than being into that mindset of just becoming an airline pilot you know a lot of people just want to fly the 73 why not do charters why not fly the Learjet around why not um especially here a lot of pilots in australia go up to png and fly for the likes of susie air uh where you're flying into some amazing strips and i put a video on my pilot just to just so everyone can see what it's like it, it's amazing absolutely amazing mm-hmm. yeah that's what you know i tell you the truth that's one thing that might in my own transition to be, you know, being an airline pilot. And one reason that I still tried to instruct uh, up until about a year, year and a half ago when I moved is you, you get, you lose some of the hobby aspect of it because when, you know, once, once I started taking, took the job as an airline pilot, you're flying from point A to point B on somebody else's time, somebody else's mission. And, you know, you just, after a while, you sort of get away from the pleasure of, hey, I'm just going to go out and take the girlfriend for a ride or go go to, you know, do one of these $100 hamburger trips to the local <laughs> airport, you know, 100 miles away, go get some lunch just for giggles. So um, I completely understand and I agree with you. I think it's a good idea for people to sort of rekindle that flame and that passion for aviation by trying another rating or, uh, you know, gliding, like you said, or seaplane or um, flying a tailwheel or something. It's definitely... Uh, I got to tell you what, glider flying and seaplane are on my list. Those are two things that I'd like to do for sure. Absolutely. I, I, when I was instructing in the Cub, I had a uh, second officer from Cathay Pacific. He, uh, on his stopovers in Auckland, uh, he'd have a couple of days, and he actually did the tailwheel endorsement with me during those days. And um, one thing that was absolutely shocking was his rudder work. And <laughs> you can't be lazy on rudder when you're in a especially in a pipe of carb or something right. like that. Right. Um, it was just amazing. He couldn't see attitudes and that sort of thing. And I asked him, I said, hey, how much flying have you really been doing? And, and he said, nothing. He hasn't done a thing. And that got me thinking, you know, again, nothing against the airline pilots, but I think they need to make sure that they're keeping themselves current mm-hmm. rather than just watching these things. Or second officers, how, much, how often do they really fly? Yeah. So... That, that's one thing that I'm actually worried about with this entire industry. And my friend, he said uh, one of the airlines in Australia who haven't been doing very well, they've actually in fact been grounded um, for a little bit, their sim check every six months was exactly the same, exactly the same engine failure, exactly the same wind, same runway, same SID, same star, everything. Right. So it was almost rote learn. And that's awful. That's not how it should be. Yeah, well, you know, you've probably noticed some of these high-profile accidents, um, the Air France one being one. Um, we had one here in America a few years ago, uh, a commuter crash. It kind of been bringing these issues to light and you know, in the media with, well, at least giving you know airline pilots sort of a bad rep in, in one aspect that maybe – like you said, maybe they're not flying enough, and especially in the example with your friend at Cathay Pacific as a as an SO, they, I mean, you you're a cruise, you're a cruise pilot. That's what you do. You probably the only landings you probably ever do are in the simulator every three or six months when you go when you, you know go for a recheck. So, it's it's not always because of uh, you know in that example, not always because you you know you're just lazy or you're not flying the airplane. But some of these flying jobs out there. As you work your way up through the ranks, you just, you know, you don't get that stick time. You don't get that that hands-on flight experience. So uh, I completely agree. It's funny. You and I got a lot of common <laughs> common uh, thoughts there on, on that issue. Yeah, um, well, it, it is a big problem. And that's why I was happy to take this Baron job because mm-hmm. um, 50% of it is VFR, and I love that. 
you're going into strips that <laughs> they don't have lights. Half of them don't even have wind socks. So <laughs> you have to sort sort it out for yourself. Are and they paved or you know what are, you, are these un, un, undeveloped airports or what? Oh, they're just dirt strips. Um, that's that's you know, not, it, taking a baron you, into a dirt strip that rocks. <laughs> if you can imagine the red earth that <laughs> Australia is well known for, that's that's it. You know, um, and there's just so much more to uh to flying uh, i keep saying that but i just can't get it out there enough and that's mm-hmm. why i want to go to the company air with sunday mm-hmm. um they're, they're on my target list i want to go to them because flying beavers and caravans hands on on the water doing scenics and charters that's that would be just amazing mm-hmm. yeah well wonderful well uh is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap it up adam not really uh other than if anyone's got any help or any funny stories or articles, just anything to share because that's what my pilot's about. There's there's no money involved. We're not out there for hidden motives or miles or anything like that, just to share and help everyone out so they can jump on there and contact us or even contact you and and I'm sure they can uh, get their views or comments or whatever out there. Great. Now, I actually forgot, uh, or, I, or if I forgot, I haven't said it since the beginning, but the website is www.mypilot dot net and what other ways as far as twitter facebook email um you know could listeners get a hold of you should they should they choose to uh, at the moment we're only on twitter and okay. we're still looking at how to sort of develop and, and get even bigger all right and your twitter handle is my pilot updates that's the one wonderful well i'd like to thank you for coming on uh, this evening adam it's been a well i guess it's evening where i am but uh almost lunchtime where you are <laughs> <laughs> that's the one <laughs> oh right oh yeah um appreciate you coming on it's been a real pleasure getting to chat with you this evening and learn more about the website for the listeners again mypilot.net this is adam howley on this episode of uh, the noticed airmen interview series and i'm your host len costa wishing you guys clear skies and calm winds take care everybody Wonderful. Very good. Let's go ahead. You still got me, Adam? Yeah, Mike. Okay, let me stop the live broadcast. Hold on.